You want some cereal? I feel so good today, I'm gonna choose from the low fiber end of the shelf. Some cereals tantalize the taste buds of both kids and adults alike, and some, well, not so much. Let's take a look at the 10 worst cereal failures in history. Breakfast cereals with a surprise inside is diabetes. Nerd cereal. All right, food nerds, reality check. Everyone knows what nerds are. The classic American candy is still widely accessible across the world. However, many people are unaware that a nerd cereal was produced for a limited time in 1985. The cereal box was separated into two halves, each carrying a distinct nerd cereal flavor. Orange or cherry and strawberry or grape were the two flavors available. It's a tiny, tangy, crunchy, sweetened cereal, according to the description. To persuade customers to sample the cereal, little packets of nerds candy were included, as well as a mail offer for a two-sided nerds bowl with a nerd gate. It's for nerds, okay? When the nerd gate was lifted, it allowed milk to pass from one side of the bowl to the other while keeping the taste separate. Even though the two-sided dish was brilliant, nerd cereal didn't last long on store shelves. It was phased out in a hurry while the candy continued to grow in popularity. Which side are you going to eat first? Was the question nerd cereal asked us in the mid 80s. There were apparently complaints that eating nerd cereal caused vivid red-orange bowel movements, an extremely concerning but not life-threatening health issue. In the end, that may have been the main reason this product was pulled from the shelves. Cabbage Patch Kids Cereal. Cabbage Patch Kids don't make you fat? In the 1980s, almost every commercially broadcast item and or children's toy had a cereal tie-in. Being one of the most popular dolls of the era, the makers of Cabbage Patch Kids eagerly jumped on the bandwagon. Yet most cereals created from toys were just cheap knockoffs of other cereals or strange shapes with hazy color schemes to remind one of the object at hand. Worse yet, the sugar content of these morning treats was generally so high that youngsters may as well have been eating candy. So cereals like Cabbage Patch Kids appeared, claiming the benefits of only three grams of sugar per serving. Look at me, I'm eating healthy. That's about the same sugar content as a carrot. The makers thought it wise to avoid the ire of helicopter parents who might have been wary of a cereal connected to popular toys. But can you imagine what cereal tasted like with so few grams of sugar? Instead, they attracted the tears and disgust of kids all across America. This nonsense tasted precisely like the cardboard box it came in. In reality, the container was probably sweeter and didn't taste like a bowl of mud. Goodbye and good riddance, Cabbage Patch Kids cereal. Fruity Yummy Mummy. Fruity Yummy Mummy makes your tummy go yummy. One of General Mills' monster cereals was Fruity Yummy Mummy. These monster themed cereals were initially produced in 1971 and included a variety of amusing and comical monsters, all for the enjoyment of both children and adults. Frankenberry and Count Chocula were the initial mascots, but as time went on, a whole line of monsters were built up around these cereal variations. Making cereals based on monsters may seem foolish to people who were not alive during the monster mania of the 1970s. Mm, kids these days. However, there was a tremendous monster movie craze at the time. This meant that monster-themed cereals were extremely popular and simple to market to both children and adults. Kids would get a sugar rush just by seeing these boxes. Fruity Yummy Mummy was a spin-off of the craze, and it only lasted a short period on the market among General Mills' other monster cereals. Rainbow Bright Hey Rainbow Bright! Hello, Shakespeare. Rainbow Bright and the Star Stealer was released in 1985, and so did this cereal. The Rainbow Bright animated television series was quite popular with kids. This tie-in product was marketed as a sweetened cereal with natural fruit tastes that was enriched with nine important vitamins and minerals. According to a Rainbow Bright television commercial, Rainbow Bright is a new cereal from the Rainbow Bright brand. Rainbow Bright is a sweet, delicious rainbow of vivid color made up of fruit-flavored multicolored nibbles. A brief tale about the universe of Rainbow Bright was included on the back of an early box. If you travel to the end of the rainbow, to a land far, far away, you will discover a wonderful kingdom known as Rainbow Land. I welcome you all to Cloud Cuckoo Land! Where all of the world's colors are created. Rainbow Bright, who lives in Rainbow Land, is a charming and brilliant young lady. 
Rainbow Bright is so enamored with the rainbow's colors that she utilizes them to make the world a brighter and friendlier place for everybody. Murky Dismal and Lurky, two evil animals that reside in a realm called the Pits, despise everything colorful and joyous. They want to kidnap Rainbow Bright and steal all of her colors. It sounded like quite an upbeat and wonderful television show, but unfortunately the serial wasn't loved so much and was removed from store shelves. Urkel O's. Urkel O's, no. Urkel O's! Family Matters was must-see television for every youngster growing up in the 1990s. From 1989 until its final season in 1998, the sitcom was a cult classic. It was so popular that its cast, including the Winslow family and, of course, Steve Urkel, are still remembered today. In the early 1990s, the craze around Urkel and his catchphrase, Did I do that? was at an all-time high, prompting serial producer Ralston to cash in. Urkel O's debuted in the retail sector in 1991. The strawberry and banana flavored rounds, akin to Fruit Loops in the cereal, were colored red and yellow. Urkel was the inspiration for not just the cereal's name, but also its branding, packaging, and advertising activities. Pictures of Urkel were posted all over the box. Nine distinct renditions of the well-known figure were distributed across the front, sides, and back of one box of this strange cereal. All over the place. Advertisements for Urkel O's may still be found on YouTube, with White reprising his Family Matters persona for the commercials. The most memorable Urkel O's box was one from 1992 that provided a chance to win a vacation to Washington, D.C. Urkel was shown in the box as Uncle Sam, clad in red, white, and blue, and hitting a marching band drum with the phrase, Urkel for President on it. Each box included an Urkel campaign badge and an entry form for the grand prize trip. Despite the long run of family matters, Urkel fever never extended to the cereal, and Urkel O's were discontinued less than a year after its introduction. The cereal's taste was most likely a factor in its lack of popularity. Many people believed Urkel O's tasted strange and fake, and they only bought it for the box. Freakies. They like Freaky Freaky all night long. Ralston's Freakies was a sweetened breakfast cereal that was distributed in the United States. The cereal, a crunchy, light brown, torus-shaped melange, was Ralston's first big foray into the sweetened, ready-to-eat cereal industry, and it was promoted by a cast of seven characters known as the Freakies. The Wells Rich Green advertising firm located in New York City were the ones to create the artwork. The cereal was introduced in 1972. In 1973, a chocolate variant named Coco Freakies was released, and in 1975 to 1976, a fruit version called Fruit Freakies saw the light of day. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. The mascots were a group of seven monsters, each with their own color scheme and design. The third television advertisement, We Are the Freakies, included each character naming and describing themselves in song, in addition to the characteristics detailed on boxes and demonstrated in all of their marketing materials. The majority of the characters were inspired by folks who worked at the advertising agency. Boss Moss, for example, was inspired by creative director Charlie Moss. The walking disaster was quickly phased out in 1976. Undeterred, Ralston's introduced a new freaky cereal in 1986, depicting the creatures as extraterrestrials from another world. Grumble and Boss Moss stayed the same, but most of the other characters were altered completely. This new version was only successful for a brief period before vanishing for good. Banana Wackies I'm a banana. I'm a banana. Long forgotten since, General Mills produced Banana Wackies cereal in 1965. The cereal boxes merely said Wackies, but the television advertising called it Banana Wackies. This nonsense tasted like wallpaper. It's no wonder nobody's ever heard of it. Banana Wackies was also an advertiser for the weekly television show Happy the Clown. To encourage sales of the bland cereal, Happy would recite the Banana Wackies jingle and tell kids that a bowl of Banana Wacky cereal is the finest way to start the day. According to numerous people who say they enjoyed Banana Wackies in their childhood, it was made out of oat cereal with sweet banana flavor pieces. Do you have any idea what breakfast cereal is made of? Apparently, some thought they were delicious and had a distinct banana flavor. Others, to put it bluntly, found them revolting. Post Alphabets, a direct rival, were developed in 1958 and are still available today. Despite Happy the Clown's best efforts, Wackies barely lasted about a year before General Mills decided to cut their losses. J Ward Productions, which also developed the Cap'n Crunch TV advertising from the 1960s and 1970s, as well as the iconic Rocky and Bullwinkle show, produced their commercials. King Vitaman. <gasps> the King! The 
The king is here. Quaker Oats King Vitaman was an American brand of breakfast cereal once widely distributed across America. The cereal was first released in 1968, and its mascot changed multiple times since its inception. The crazed royal nut job that originally appeared on this cereal box was absolutely terrifying for adults and kids alike. In the 1970s, the creepy old king most likely haunted a few children's nightmares. Although King Vitaman is still alive and kicking, the artwork on the box has happily changed. King Vitaman cereal had a high vitamin and iron content, as well as a low sugar level. It contained only 6 grams of sugar per serving. It's paltry compared to the 13 grams or more hidden in other popular morning cereals like Cap'n Crunch and Lucky Charms. The cereal's early television commercials were animated by J. Ward Productions, the same company that brought you Rocky and Bullwinkle. Rocky, Bullwinkle, shall we? The ads featured King Vitaman and his two knights, Sir Laugh It Up and Sir Craven Lay. Along with the Blue Baron and the Not So Bright Knight, the mascots battled laughable opponents. Yet, the cereal has all but vanished since its introduction in 1968. The brand was phased out in 2019. However, much to everyone's surprise, King Vitaman cereal can still be found, though manufacturing has been significantly curtailed in recent years. Outlet stores, the internet, and even a yard sale are your best chances for locating a box of King Vitaman in 2022. The cereal has a richer history than its vitamin and mineral content, dating back to the forced vowel change from vitamin to vitaman, as the FDA prohibits non-vitamins from using the term. Grins and smiles and giggles and laughs. <laughs> Grins and smiles and giggles and laughs cereal by Ralston was another product that never quite hit it off. There was a commercial for the cereal that featured Cecil, the grumpy cereal making machine and robot who would spit out delicious boxes of this goofy cereal once you made him laugh. We're not sure who the brains behind this seemingly impossible product and marketing campaign were, but they deserve an award for making people want the cereal even more out of pure confusion. Grins and Smiles and Giggles and Laughs cereal is full of sweet, crunchy, smiley face shaped bits and is named after its four cartoon characters who strive to make Cecil the robot laugh and generate the cereal itself. Welcome to your future. This cereal, believe it or not, is one of numerous creepy happy face cereals, including Kaboom, Morning Funnies, Cabbage Patch Kids, and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles available only in Canada. There have been enough face-shaped meals out there to sustain Hannibal Lecter for breakfast, lunch, and dinner over the years. It seems like not too many people miss this particular cereal though, even with such a memorable name and strange marketing campaign. Crunchy Logs Coconut crunch in every bite. What a strange and unappetizing name for a food item. It's hard to imagine starting your morning off with a bowl of cereal called Crunchy Logs, but many people did just so in the 1970s. Created by the Kellogg's Company in 1978, Crunchy Logs came in two distinct flavors, chocolate and strawberry. The cereals actually tasted quite good according to many online reviews and nostalgic cereal blogs, but the name and the look was a turnoff. The presentation was a bad distraction that really seems to have taken away from how appetizing they might have been. Those look really bad, Corey. With the friendly looking mascot named Bixby Beaver, it was clear these logs were meant to represent pieces of wood a beaver would use to build their dams. However, cereal companies have always seemed to struggle with recreating small details and defining features in their products, especially back in the 1970s. So, it turns out, these supposed piles of sweet wooden logs looked more like giant bowls of animal drawings. Luckily, most people who enjoyed their wooden logs never questioned the strange look and name of their favorite breakfast cereal. If this cereal was still around today, things would probably be much different though. Looking for more awesome videos? Well, we've got them, so stay right here and check out another one.